Good morning and welcome to the banks of the mighty River Yare, one of the historic rivers in the country and certainly one of the best for fishing. Now the aim today is exactly that. We're so lucky, we live 15 minutes away from this venue and I've got so many questions about how I would attack this venue in a match situation for people who are traveling a long way. Hopefully in this video, we'll give you a good insight into exactly what you can expect from this river. So as you can see, we're still in the carpet. Now I've not even looked at the river. I don't know the condition. We've not picked the best day or anything like that. We've rocked up as if it was a normal day and we're gonna treat it exactly like that. So a little bit about the river if you haven't seen it or you're not local to it. So the match stretch itself runs for about seven sections normally, from around peg 60 to 165. So a lot of pegs and quite often the venue is actually full. 100 peg matches on this venue, you know, certainly at the beginning of the season, they are very, very common. And to generalize of what sections are best is so hard because it's same with every venue, every sort of section has its day. But what I'll show you in today's video is the main methods that work on this river. So depending on where you draw in what section, you can target your, your intended species. So we've got a lot of gear to get sorted. We're gonna get unloaded, get on the peg, and we'll talk to you in a lot more detail about the do's and don'ts for this river. Okay, so we're all nicely set up now and I'm actually sitting about 500 yards away from the match stretch purely because there's a match on today and we couldn't get on there and we wanted to show you exactly what I would do if I was fishing a match. So the first thing to think about, and this is so important on this river, is check the water clarity. Pretty much that decides what you're going to do throughout the rest of the day. So if you get there and it's really coloured, you can't see very deep into the water, you probably know skimmers bream are going to be winning the match but if you get there on the flip side and it's really crystal clear you probably know roach is going to be the majority of your weight so it is so important that would probably be my biggest tip before you start anything is assess what you think you're fishing for now today looking just down to my right i can see it's quite clear with a very small tinge of color so there's a, a small chance of catching a few skimmers but if I was going to guess, like I said, we haven't started fishing, but if I was going to guess, I'd say majority of it is going to be roach. So in my head, I'm already thinking, you don't need a massive weight. You just need a, quite a few roach. And if you get a few bonus skimmers and that, you're going to be doing well. So what I would always do on any peg, regardless of where I drew, I would always start on the feeder, just in case you feel there's some bream there, you need to be catching them early doors. So the first thing I'd do is have at least half an hour or so on the feeder. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna start baiting up and getting that ready. And I would have at least half an hour on there, trying to work out if you can get yourself a bonus fish or two before you move on to something else, which we'll talk about in a moment. Now, where you cast it, you'd be determined to where you draw. So tend to try and find yourself some deeper water. So where I've sat, I've already clipped the lead on, cast around a little bit found myself the deeper water, which because I'm on this outside of a bend is slightly closer to my side of halfway. I've clipped it up, picked my far bank marker, and that's where it would be my first aim of attack. And regardless, like I said, of where I drew, that would be how I would start any match here on the air. Half an hour or so on the feeder, feel your way in, try and catch yourself a bigger fish. And hopefully, you know, if it's a, a good red letter day, that's how you'll start the match and how you'll finish it. And you'll have a good weight of fish, which this river is well known for so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get this one fired out there now so like i said i'm going to fish for about five hours as if i was fishing into a match and i'm going to hit the clip make sure you put a big bow in your line like this is a big tidal river a heavy flow so put a bow in your line and then i'm going to sit down and concentrate on that tip and just feel my way into what i feel this session is going to be about Thank you. 
we've been fishing away for perhaps, I don't know, five or six chucks and we've had a roach pretty much every cast. So it was as I expected. It looks like it's going to be a bit of a roach there. I've had a couple of rudd as well, which has been quite nice, but we've just had another fish, another decent little bite. They're always good bites. And yeah, we've got another, another roach, probably netable one, that one. So we'll show you them. And then what we'll do is we'll have a, a talk about some of the tackle and the rigs that you need for this particular river. But here's a mega yeah roach. You can expect to catch, you know, some fairly big one. They do go, I've had roach here to over two pound on this river. So, you know, when we say roach fishing, we're not talking little bleak sometimes that people expect. But what I'll do is I'll mainly want to talk in this section about the tackle that you need to fish this particular river, because it's a question I get asked an awful lot and it is quite specialist. So as I've mentioned before, it's a big river, really fast flowing. So you need a rod, for example, that can cope with that. Now, personally, I use a Horizon XD class, 13 foot in 130 grams. So you want a rod that's really capable of casting perhaps 90 to 150 grams. It's got enough power. Couple that with like a mini big pit reel, winding these heavy feeders in in this tide. It's quite a lot of abuse for a small reel. So get yourself a big reel and I load that up with six pound line. Like I said, it's nothing particularly compli complicated, but it is just very good for job and it's, you know, it's quite strong and up for this river. Rig wise, really simple. I don't need too much detail on this. So I run a feeder in between two float stops onto a twisted loop to stop any tangles, a double mini rig swivel to stop any twist on the line. And then that comes down to about a meter hook link and a size 12 hook. These are wild fish. They're not particularly hook shy or line shy. So hook links 016 and a size 12. You don't really need to go that small. But what I'm going to do now, so bait wise, I've got the standard sort of bream and roach fishing stuff when I'm fishing on this feeder. Worms, maggots, casters, and in a bream gram, but I use three different gram baits that I mix together. I don't use the whole bag, just a quarter, half a bag of each. Mix those together, put them through a riddle, and that's what I use in this bream mix. But I'm going to give it another perhaps 20 minutes on this line and I'm going to use some bigger baits. So I'm going to put a dendrobina on and a fluoro. I've just been fishing fluoro maggot at the moment just in case there is a bigger fish to be had. But while I'm catching roach every cast, it's fine, but it's not quick enough if you're trying to do a big weight of them. So you'd probably be better to catch on the pole. So before I switch to that, if this was a max situation, I'm going to up my bait size perhaps a couple of real quick chucks to the feeder, another 15, 20 minutes to see if there's any skimmers about, and then we'll make a decision if we're gonna move on from there. So loading the feeder are really simple. I plug one end, in goes the, some casters, in goes some worms, and then you cap it off the other end. So you're just sort of making a sandwich really. All you're using a ground bait for is a carrier for all that bait that the hopefully the skimmers are going to enjoy. So again, same spot, keep the regular cast going in, put a bony line, and it's now time for me to give it 20 minutes or so, see if these bigger baits make a difference. If not, we'll talk you through what I would do next if I was in this situation live in a match. Well, we've given it a fair go there on the feeder to see if we can catch anything there. The bigger baits didn't really make a difference. A couple of nice roach, a slightly bigger one, and that nice little perch there. But I think, as I said at the start of it, the clarity of the water has played king here and it's gonna be a roach fishing day. So, and on top of that, the wind's really picked up as well. So it's making the feeder fishing quite hard. But what I would do now in a match situation is I'll try and fish on the pole and see if I can put some roach together there. So that's what we'll show you and talk you for exactly how I would do it. Now, I'll start off with a real good tip that I've got from my mate Wayne Anderson, who works at our Norwich store, in the fact that when he's ever catching roach, and he's probably had more big bags of roach than most people on this river, he finds that 10 or 12 foot, for some reason, is like the optimum depth to catch roach on. 
So it doesn't matter if he finds that at four meters or 13 meters, wherever he finds that depth in his peg, he will try and fish between 10 and 12 foot. So that's a really good thing to think about and try and take forward if you're coming here and catching a few roach. So I've found that, I've already plumbed up and I plumb it up to about a float length over depth. Purely because it's quite a fast river, you wanna make sure you've got enough line that's gonna be dragging onto the bottom. And obviously don't forget that you need to keep plumbing up every sort of 15, 20 minutes. Because it's the tidal river, the levels drop or the levels rise depending on the flood or the ebb. So you need to make sure you're fishing where you think you're actually meant to be. So then going on to the rig, we've got a eight elastic, pretty heavy for roach fishing, but you're swinging in some decent sized roach. And again, a fairly heavy rig, because on here we've got a three gram pole float. I think three gram probably would cover 90% of my fishing on this river. Sometimes you might need it to come down to a two gram, it's not flowing very hard. You may occasionally need to go up to four gram, but three gram would cover most of it. And then a real simple shot and pattern, which I probably think I would use on any river to be fair, is I've got an Olivet with a bulk shot underneath it. And then from there, I've got three dropper shots, just evenly spaced out down to the hook. So nothing complex, really simple. And then the hook itself, I've actually got slightly smaller size 14 on this one, but again, wild fish. They're not really that worried about hooks or lines, so don't be too shy with it. When I fish in this particular style, how I like to kick it off, and I always do this, like I said, it's a really hungry river, not just the fish, but just the fact that the tide's so strong, it just washes your bait out. So I'd like to be quite aggressive with it. The baits change slightly, in the fact that I go to a completely black, dark ground bait, lots of hemp in it, lots of casters, and that's what I'm feeding. I'll put in probably five or six big balls of those in with a cup at the start of the session, and then I'll just run the float with it over the top of that. So a few slight tweaks on the bait, but not a huge change really. Basically all you've done is change to a black ground bait and put an addition of hemp and perhaps drop out some of the worm because you don't really catch skimmers on this line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cup in five or six balls of ground bait, get loads of bait down there and see if those roach want to play ball on this short pole line. in a match now I probably would stay on the pole but I'll stop fishing the pole because I want to talk to you about one last tactic that works really really well here on this river and that is I'll call it a mixture of the two so if you don't catch very well on the pole or you don't particularly like fishing the pole and you can't catch skimmers and weed on the longer feeder what is then time to do is get back on the feeder I use exactly the same tactic which has a separate the only thing I change is I use a slightly lighter feeder, so I'm an angle feeder, and I'm passing about 16 to 20 metres, sort of just past the long pole line. But what you do there is you use your roach stuff, so your roach ground bait, flat ground bait, loads of hemp, loads of casters, and you are targeting the roach. So it's a little bit quicker. One, because obviously you're not fishing the other side or in the middle of the river, and two, because you're fishing roach ground bait, roach bait with the hook, you're, you're specifically targeting those fish. So it's one of those methods that, like I said, if you can't catch, you don't draw a good roach pole thing, or you don't like the fish pole. A lot of people don't like three holes, one hole, and whole rolls with them. So you get one long feed chuck and one short roach feed chuck, and it can be really, really good. So I'm going to have a go on that now just to see what that's like for today. Uh, I think it's going to be 
I think it's going to be pretty good. I think it's going to roach you there. They're on the pole line, so there's no reason not to be anywhere else. But on this solid fish, just probably a single fluoro maggot. I wouldn't worry about any other bait. Perhaps a little worm head if you want to try something else. And then, like I said, I've got the black roach grab bait. And rather than plugging it, I've filled it with hemp, filled it with casters, and you're just popping it in the feeder. Now, Thank <laughs> you. 